When the Capitol opened, the Senate was located on the second floor east wing. The State Library was originally located in this area. When the library opened, there were not enough materials to fill the shelves, but by the turn of the century, the room was filled to its capacity. The library moved across the street by 1910. The chamber was renovated in the mid 1980s. The chandeliers are reproductions of gaslight chandeliers that were in the Hall of Flags. The stenciling is based on a design found behind the galleries. For over 70 years, the stenciling and stained glass windows were covered. There are 36 senators and each represents about 100,000 constituents. Seating is by senatorial district. The side chambers are the caucus rooms for the political parties. The legislature meets from January to June in odd numbered years and February to May in even years. The galleries are open to the public whenever the Senate is in session. Above the galleries are the voting boards with the members listed by district. The members' names appear in white letters. When they vote, their names turn green for yes and red for no. The voting buttons are in small boxes on the members' desk. The president of the Senate is the lieutenant governor. The lieutenant governor only votes in case of a tie, but is not required to vote at that time. Behind the president's podium is the Charter Oak Chair. The chair was carved from the Charter Oak Tree, a significant piece of Connecticut history. The story of the Charter Oak Tree begins with the history of democracy in Connecticut. In 1639, the Fundamental Orders was adopted in Connecticut. The document was based on a sermon preached by Hartford's founder, the Reverend Thomas Hooker. According to Hooker, the foundation of authority laid in the consent of the people. The Fundamental Orders was the first written document to establish a democratic form of government. It was later used as a model for the United States Constitution, thus the state nicknamed Constitution State. In 1662, Governor John Winthrop successfully negotiated the granting of a self-governing charter for the Connecticut colony from King Charles II. In 1687, with James II now king, the charter was revoked. James wanted to unite the New England colonies with New York to create the Dominion of New England. Governor Treat refused to surrender the document and the king called for a meeting. The meeting was held in Halloween, 1687, in a Hartford meeting house on the site of what is now the old state house. Representing the king was Edmund Andros, who later became the governor of New York. According to the legend, at some point during the meeting, the candles lighting the chamber were extinguished. When the candles were relighted, the charter was gone. It had been taken to Captain Joseph Wadsworth and hidden in the trunk of a large oak tree found on the nearby Willis estate. Andros and his men could not find the document and returned to England empty handed. King James did take control of Connecticut, but his power was short lived. Under King William and Queen Mary, some of the articles of the charter were reinstated. The people of Connecticut lived under the charter until the adoption of a state constitution in 1818. The tree became known as the Charter Oak. It had been revered by the Native Americans prior to the arrival of the colonists. It has been said that the Native Americans knew it was time to plant their crops when the tree's leaves were the size of a mouse's ear. After it fell during a lightning storm in August of 1856, the Charter Oak was honored with a parade and a funeral-like ceremony featuring the Colt Firearms Factory Band. The tree measured 21 feet in circumference and its wood was later used to carve hundreds of objects, perhaps the best known being the chair. It is also called the wishing chair because tradition states that the Lieutenant Governor sits in it and wishes to become governor.